Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about the tree data structure. Now, trees are one of the most flexible and common data structures that are used in computer programming. They're used in all sorts of different algorithms, as well as a lot of user interface development. So what I'm going to be doing is walking you through a couple different types of trees, and then we'll look at how you can insert elements into certain types of trees, and then also search through a tree using the breadth first search and the depth first search. The first thing I want to highlight is just what a tree kind of looks like basically. So there's a few different aspects here to this tree that we can look at. Now, generally a tree is a hierarchical data structure, which means that it goes from the top down. So up here is what we call the root node. And this is common in every type of tree is you're going to have one node and a node is just one of the different parts of the tree. So that's what we would call it a node. But the root node is the node where everything kind of descends from. So you can see up here, I just have this tree and it has a bunch of different nodes, all of them which have different letter values and they kind of go in order. But this one up at the top here, this is what we would call the root node. And that just means that it's kind of the highest level ancestor. So we would describe all the different nodes in the tree according to like familial relationships. So I would say that A is the parent of B, C and D. And these types of familial relationships like parent child or you could say that a is the grandparent of g those types of relationships are really good for computer programming because a lot of times we have data structures or we have information that's kind of nested and we'll take a look at that in the next slide but here in this tree we have a which has children's b c and d and then we would say that b is the parent of e and f so that's kind of how we would relate those. And then E and F we would say are sibling nodes because they share the same parent. So all these different nodes are kind of arranged hierarchically in the tree. And then there's another type of uh, terminology that we, we would use for these nodes that are down here at the bottom. We would call them leaf nodes. And so that kind of goes into the, you know, the vocabulary of a tree, right? The leaf is kind of like the last part of the tree. It's sort of the part that's the most outside collecting all the sun. So anytime you have a node which doesn't have any children, we would call that a leaf node. And so for all of these nodes, we could store any type of information in them. You could even store other trees. In this case, we're just looking at letters. And then in the next, in the next example, we're going to take a look at numbers. But this is essentially how a tree is laid out in that hierarchical fashion. So let's go ahead and take a look at another type of tree, which is a UI tree. So a lot of you guys are probably familiar with HTML or maybe you're familiar with syntax that looks kind of like this. This is syntax for creating a user interface. So a user interface is just like the, you know, whatever's showing up on the screen. It could be like buttons. It could be, in this case, little emojis. But you'll notice here that I'm using this uh, little syntax, which is called XML, this kind of, or HTML, this sort of uh, tag syntax. And here we have an example of how a tree could be used to represent a user interface. So in this case, I have a user interface, which is from a video that I did previously called emoji mood board. But we have up here is the root node, this kind of wrapper. So it wraps all of this information. And then we have a title, which is stored in this H1. And then I had this little mood strip, which was essentially this game was where you could click on a bunch of these emojis and then they would pop up on the mood strip. Uh, but then over here, I have all the options of these emojis, which are just like happy, sad, angry, confused, love, and then clear. So in this case, this represents the user interface. And you can check out my emoji mood board video if you want to see the full build of this. But it's interesting because trees, not only can they be used to represent like we had over here, like letters or just any general piece of information, but they're really useful for representing user interfaces using HTML. So another type of tree that we can take a look at is what's called a binary tree. So unlike a UI tree, a binary tree has very specific rules about where the elements can go. So in this case, we're using numbers, and this is actually a common uh, thing to store in these types of binary trees. So everything that starts up here with the root node is either less than or greater than the root node. So in this case, six, is our root node and everything to the left, if you'll notice here, we would call this a subtree, which is just like a subsection of the tree. Everything here has a value that's less than six. And then everything here over on the right has a value that's greater than six. So we call this a binary tree because it's sort of split down the middle like that. So from the root node, everything's either on the left or on the right. So if I wanted to insert a node into this, like let's say that I had the node five, 
and I wanted to insert it into this binary tree, I would first have to check it against each one of these nodes. So the first thing I do is check it against this six and I would say, is five greater than or less than six? It's less than, so we would go over to the left. Now is five greater than or equal to, or greater than or less than three? It's greater than, so we would go over to the right. And then you compare it to four, five is greater than four, so that would go over on the right here, so we'd be able to insert this node. So that's how we could insert a node into this binary tree. Let's say we had another one, this time it's gonna be nine. So I would compare that to the six, it's greater than, I compare it to the seven, it's greater than, so put it over to the right, compare it to the eight, it's greater than, so I'd put it over to the right again. So in this case, nine would be inserted into the tree just like that. So there are certain types of trees, like this binary tree, where there would be certain rules about how you could insert uh, information. And then the last tree we're gonna look at is this guy over here. And this just has a mixture of letters and numbers, and they're not really in any particular order, so don't really uh, worry too much about that. But with this tree, I'm gonna show you how we might search for an element. So let's say that we wanted to search for the E. Now there's two main ways that we can search through a binary tree. One is called breadth first, and one is called depth first. And depending on the algorithm that you're using, you're gonna to wanna to use uh, either one. But a breadth first search would mean that we check all of the rows in order. So let's say we wanted to search for this E, and we wanted to search for it breadth first. I would start up here at the A and I would ask, okay, is A equal to E? No, it's not. So then what I would do is I would go down and I would check every single node at this level of the hierarchy. So there's different levels of the hierarchy, right? We would say this is the root node, this is like the children of the root node, then we have this level, and then down here finally we have all the leaf nodes. So if I'm searching for an entity breadth first, it means that I would start and then I would go down and search all of the siblings and then finally, I would go down here, search all of these siblings, and if I still didn't find it, I would search all of these. So in this case with the E, if we wanted to search for a breath first, we'd start with the A, and then we'd search the B, the C, the D, and then finally down here, we'd get to the E. The other way you can search the tree is called depth first. So instead of searching each one of these rows in order, we would first search in sort of a depth direction. So we would start with the A, that's not the E, and then we'd come down to the B, and then we'd come down to the E, and if we were searching for one, we'd have to go down even further to the one. So instead of searching each one of the rows and each one of the entries in the rows, we would just search down like that. So then if we wanted to find the G, for example, we would start with the A, come down to the B, to the E, to the one, and then we'd come back up here to the C, and then we'd go to the F, the two, and then we come down here to the D, and then finally we'd make it down to the G. So that's kind of the difference between breadth first and depth first. One is you go all the way down to the root node, that's depth first, or sorry, to the leaf node, so we descend down kind of in this order. And then with breadth first, we would go across all the rows, just like that. And depending on the way that the tree is structured or the type of tree that you have, you're gonna wanna pick one or the other, but that's basically how it works. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully now you have a little bit more of an understanding about how trees work. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and otherwise I will see you in the next one.